In this easy Procreate drawing tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to paint this cute winter scenery using custom texture brushes. You can download them along with the color palette free of charge via the link in the video description. Now if you are ready, let's grab our pencils and get started. I'm gonna head and create a square canvas with the dimensions of 2000 by 2000 pixels. To draw this cute winter scenery, we are gonna use brushes from one of my favorite free brush sets with textures and patterns. There is also this cute blue and pink color palette that will help us achieve that cozy night atmosphere. I tried to make this tutorial as easy as possible, so you can follow along even if you are a beginner to digital art. And if you'd like to take your drawing skills to a whole new level and support me at the same time, you can find over 100 advanced video tutorials on my Patreon. I added a link to it in the description to this video. Now with that being said, let's start creating our cute illustration. In the beginning, let's change the background color. For that we need to click here, then go to the color palette and select this color that comes first. Now we will draw a stylish fur tree on the foreground, on this empty layer that we have. As the base color for the fur tree, let's pick color number 5 from the palette. Then go to the brush set for this tutorial and select textured liner. Here the brush size can be set to around 25%. And we can draw the first shape for the top of the fur tree. Let's make it rounded on top. And draw close to the left side of the canvas. On the right side it can go with another angle. This way we will add some dynamics to it. And at the bottom let's draw a few curves. Like this one. Then change the angle a little bit and after that add a couple more. So this one can go a little upper. And then to the right. Now we can connect them all. And to keep it textured in the middle, we can just paint inside the shape manually. With a bigger size. Like this. If you leave the pencil up and paint again, it will be less textured. So let's finish this part. Also paint here on the right. I will make a couple more strokes. And now this is done. I think we can shade it right away. So let's go to change the brush first. From the same brush set, we need to select grainy pencil. And set the size and opacity to maximum. Our fur tree will have a few colors. So first we can apply shadows, using color number 8. To keep all the colors within the shape, we have two options. First we can alpha lock the layer. And second option is to add another one with a clipping mask. I prefer clipping masks, because they can be adjusted easier. So let's tap on the plus button, then tap on the new layer, and select clipping mask. In the middle of the composition, we will add a crescent, it will be our light source. So the right part of the tree will be highlighted. This way we need to apply the shadow on the left. Let's start making strokes like this. Paint approximately half of it. And also make a few strokes at the lower edge. Go slightly up. We can try to lower the brush size. Let's say to 64%. And make more strokes. With a smaller brush size. I will add a couple more strokes. And after that, we can put a darker color. It will be number 9. Here we can make the size even smaller, like 36%. And apply it right on the edge. To make it almost opaque. Let's go down. Then lower the size again. And work on the edges of the smaller shapes. 
I will load it one more time. And put a shadow like this. Here it can go slightly up. Now after we edit the shadow, let's also put a highlight on the right side. Starting with color number 6. Here we can make the size bigger again, even at 100% and start making a stroke on the right to get this texture. Let's paint a little more, close to the right edge and in the end apply color number 7, which is very light. I think here we can lower the size a little bit and continue making strokes. This part will be the most highlighted. We can even make it like this, as an arc. Alright, now when this first shape is ready, we can go ahead and merge these two layers. And to draw another part of the tree, we need to add another layer. Then drag it underneath. We will continue drawing it and go down. So let's switch back to the base color, it was number 5. And select textured liner brush again. So we can create the outlines. Our tree will have a shape of a curved triangle, so we need to make this part a bit wider. And it will also go with an angle, even more to the right. Let's just set the size to 25%. So the edges look same. And I will start drawing the first curve on the left. It can go this way, then up a little, let me make it a bit more rounded, and then I will draw on the right. Make this part a little bit longer. Let's now put another small curve here. Then add one more. Then another one. Now we can draw from this part. I will adjust it. And then just connect them. With more curves. Now we can definitely make the size bigger. To paint inside the shape faster. Just like this. Let's be careful. I'll rotate the canvas and just keep it slightly textured. Looks like sand. Alright. Now we have one more shape that we need to shade. I think I like how it looks, so we can now add another layer with the clipping mask, right above this one. And here we will use exactly same colors as in the first shape. So let's start with color number 8. Let's select our shading brush, that is called Granny Pencil, and we'll set it to 100%. Let's also apply the shadow on the left, and also a little bit on top. Let's make it darker at the lower side. Go a little up here. Paint slightly in the middle. So these particles will blend with light color that we will add later. Just like this. Alright. Now we can go a little bit darker and use color number 9. Let's just lower the brush size a little. Darken it more on the left side like this. Then make it even smaller. 
and put a curve here. We need to make a few strokes. Then also work on this side and continue going to the right with all these curves. Let's just darken this side. Here we can change the angle. Also put it here on the small arc and on the longer part. It is getting a little bit fluffy. Let's just darken it even more. I think it is enough now. Let's select color number 6. Make the size big again. And put it here on the right. Let's blend the particles as I said. So it'll be a mix of dark and light tones. Now after we applied this light color, we can lower the size and also put it here on the edges to add reflected light. This way we will also add some volume to the snowy part. Let's put it here. And a little bit on this one. Now we also need to add color number 7. On the most highlighted part. Like this one. We can press a little bit more here. And also add like a light spot here. That comes from the crescent. Ok, I think now it is enough. We got another nice shape. So now we can merge these two layers. And to add a cast shadow that comes from the top part, we can put another layer above. Then also clip it to keep the color inside and set it to multiply mode. Let's now pick color number 10 and change the brush to textured shader. It has a different texture. So we can lower the size to around 15% and start making strokes right here on top of the shape. Let's press a little bit more on the pencil. It is getting a little bit dark here. And if it is too dark, First we can apply smudge tool, set it to the same brush, smudge the tips a little, we just need to make the size a bit smaller, like 9%. So let's smudge it first, make it follow the shape. Let's stretch it a little bit here to add the shadow that comes from this part, just a little bit. And now we can also lower the opacity of this layer to make it a little bit lighter. It can be set to around 75% or so. After that these two layers can be merged as well. And we can add one more. Let's also drag it down, select color number 5 and textured liner brush, so we can draw the last part at the bottom. It needs to be even wider and have some more curves. Let's set the brush size to 25% again and draw a curve on the left side. 
it can start from somewhere here. Now let's add another one. It can go up first. And then down. Now let's start drawing smaller curves. Here at the lower side. We can make this one even more curvy. To get this dynamic look. I will make them more rounded. Then put a bigger one. It can go a little outside the canvas. Let's draw another one here. And then just connect them. Before we paint this part inside, let's add some more shapes. Let it go separately. I will put one here, then another one, and a smaller shape between these two. Let's paint them inside. We can do it with the same brush size, because they are small. We can also adjust the edges, if they are too curvy. Now let's make the size bigger. And finish painting it. All the small curves one by one. We can leave the pencil up to make them less textured. We need to be careful on the edges so the strokes don't go outside the outlines. And don't look too fluffy. Here we can do it faster. There is a lot of space. Let me also adjust it here on top. So I will lower the size. Then increase it again. And finish painting the small part. Like this. It is a little bit textured still. Now we have the last shape. And we can shade it quickly. Same as we did with this two. So let's put a layer with the clipping mask. And start with color number 8. Switch to grainy pencil. Let's increase the size to maximum. And start putting this color on the left. Make strokes like this. And move the pencil to the right side. It can go a little bit upper. Let's also paint on these small shapes. Then on these two. To add the shadows. Now we can start lowering the size. Work more on the edges. To get a more opaque color. And after that we can go a little bit darker. By switching to color number 9. 
Let's first work on the left side. Then lower the size. And add some volume to it. By adding arcs at the bottom. Let's draw on this one. Work more on the side. Then put a shadow on this big part. Make it wider. Then with a the smaller size, we can put the color here. Let's do the same on this one. Make it dark like this. Continue going more to the side. Then put a shadow on this one. And on the last small part. To separate them. I think we can make this one a little bit more pointy. So let me grab a razor, select textured liner, and I will go to the lay with the base shape. To adjust it. We can make it a little bit more curvy. Alright, now I think it looks better. Let me go back to the layer with the shading. So we can continue and add the highlights. We just need to switch back to brush. Let me also darken these parts. And after that we can switch to color number 6. Make the size big here. And put it on top. Let's go a little bit down. Also blend these particles together. Then apply it at the bottom of the small shape. And finally select color number 7. To add a light spot here. Here we can make circular strokes. To make the transition soft. Let's also put it on the edge like this. And after we did that, we just need to add the cast shadow. So I'm gonna merge these two layers, put another one, clip it and set it to multiply mode. Let's now select color number 10. And also textured shader. Let's start making strokes here on top of the shape. Go a little bit down. And just like this. Then also make strokes here. To put the shadows that come from these branches. Let's smudge them a little bit. I just want to make sure that the smudge tool is set to texture shader. And then work a little bit on the edges. To make them softer. Like this. Now let's go to lower the opacity of this layer. To around 77%. We forgot one thing. Just as on this part, we can add some light reflections. So we can just go to this layer and alpha lock it. Then select color number 6 again. 
Switch to grainy pencil. Set it to a lower size. And put it on some parts. For example on this one. So it'll get volume. Then also go to this side. I will be tweaking the brush size. So it can get a little bit bigger. Then also on this one. Just a little bit. And on this part as well. Now it looks even better. Now we can merge these two layers and put another layer underneath. This was the snowy part of the fir tree, but it needs to have the branches as well, that we can see through the snow. Here we can use the very dark color number 4. Switch to textured liner and draw some occurs behind this part. Let's just lower the brush size to 25%. Add some smaller curves behind this. We can paint it right away. Then put a couple more here. Between the big parts. Also paint it. Here we can put a line on the side. And just paint the entire shape. This way. Let's now go upper. Draw here. Put one more shape. Then two smaller ones in this gap. Let's add something on the left side. And actually it can go right from this part. To the edge of the canvas. We just need to add a few curves at the bottom. It can go down like this. And now we also need to paint it. Here we can keep it more textured. Like this. In the end, let's draw the last part. Somewhere here. It can look like this. Now after this step, our tree is ready. Let's go to the layers, select them all, and group. Now to keep the symmetry and balance in the composition, we need to put something on the right. And instead drawing a similar tree, we can try to copy some of the shapes from this one. So let's first duplicate this group. Let's now go to this group and click on the arrow that works for transformation. Using uniform, we can flip it horizontal and drag it to the right side of the canvas. Like this. Let's remove transformation menu and we can transform the tree layer by layer. For that we need to go inside the group and first delete the layer with the dark color, because we don't need it for now. Let's also toggle the visibility of these two layers and go to layer number 3. Click on the arrow again, so we can rotate it counterclockwise and make it bigger like this. We can adjust the angle and drag it more to the right. Put it like this. So it almost matches with this part of the first tree. To adjust it even more, we can switch to warp in the same menu. Push it a little bit and reveal more blue color. Like this. Now let's deselect it 
And as you can see after transformation, the texture got a little bit blurry. But we can fix it easily. Let's just go to Adjustments and select Sharpen. We just need to slide the pencil to the right like this. Until it gets sharp. I think around 80% is fine, but it depends on your result that you got after transformation. Now let's also remove this shadow on top. And since this layer is already alpha locked from the previous group, we just need to select the color number 7 and grainy pencil brush. Set the size to 100% and put the color here to hide the shadow. We can also darken the part at the bottom using color number 8. Let's put it here and go a little upper, especially in this corner. We will get something like this. Let's just make a couple more strokes. Let go up here. And after that, we can go to the next layer number 2. Let's first activate it, tap on it, and go to transformation menu. First we can switch to uniform, also rotate it to change the angle, and make it bigger. Let's also drag it a little bit upper. I think I will rotate it a little bit more. Then switch to warp and adjust the shape. Another way to fix it is to use liquify from adjustments. So let's try it out. It needs to be set to push. Let me remove momentum. There is also no distortion and pressure is set to maximum. You can adjust the size according to the shape and try to push and pull it in different directions. So this tree will look different from the first one and no one will say we copied it. We can stretch this branch a bit down and then with a smaller size I will also push this. The texture will change a little bit but we can also sharpen it. Moving the pencil to the right. Ok. Let's deselect this one. And go to the first layer. Let's switch to uniform in transformation. Also drag it upper. So this tree will look a little bit bigger. We can also rotate it. I will scale it a bit more. Put it this way, then switch to warp on the menu and make it a little bit shorter. Also adjust this arc, so it is not so curvy. Let's also use liquify to adjust some of the branches. This way we can be more precise. Like this. Let's also fix the texture. Just need to sharpen it a little. And we can actually keep the shadow. It is in the right position. Ok. We got this shape. So we can create another layer inside the group. I will direct this one upper. So the new layer will be located under all layers. Now we need to select color number 4. Also textured liner. To add some dark color here in the gaps. For example we can put a curve in this gap. And also under these branches.
Let's paint it. I think I will even select these two layers and drag them slightly down. Now it is better. I will also move this dark part. Use warp. And now I think it is fine. We can now duplicate this group. Go to this one at the bottom. Delete the layer with the dark color again. Now stay on layer number 3. And move it to the left. It can intersect with the branch of the tree on the left. We can make it bigger. Use freeform transformation. So we have some blue color at the bottom. Like this. Actually, we can even put some more shadow. This layer is locked already. So if we select color number 8 and pick grainy pencil, we can just draw here. And a little bit at the bottom. Now after we did this part, let's go to the next layer again. I will switch to uniform and scale this one. We can rotate it again. Maybe it doesn't have to be very big. But I will put it this way. So it's like another tree behind this one. Now let's go to layer number one in this group. We can drag it upper, rotate it, and also make it bigger. So it'll go like this. I will drag it upper, I think. Because here it will be balanced by the bird that you will put on the top of this tree. Okay, I think I will use warp a little bit. And that's it. Now we have two more trees easily. Let's close the group and create a new layer. We just need to drag it down and put it under all groups. Now we will start drawing more snowy shapes. And for the first one, let's pick color number 11. It will be our base color. We can pick textured liner to draw the shape. Let's will set the brush size to around 30% and draw an arc that will go from left to right. It can go a little bit more straight here. After that we need to increase the brush size and paint under this line. Let's keep it slightly textured. And then just paint it all, going down. Paint all the gaps. Behind this tree. And also between them. Just like this. If you are not quite satisfied with the shape, you can use Warp or Liquify to adjust it. I think I like this one. So we can just alpha lock this layer and apply shading on it quickly. So from the color palette, let's pick color number 12. But here I want to use a different brush than we used on the trees. It'll be textured shader. Let's try to set the size to around 35% and start making strokes at the lower edge. Go up.
we can press more at the bottom to make it almost opaque. Also in this gap, we can go a little bit upper here. It got some texture already. Let's make a couple strokes on top of it. And after that add a highlight with color 13 on top of the shape. Let's try to blend these colors together by making strokes back and forth. Just like this. You can make a few more strokes right on the side. So it'll have one color. In the end we will get this. Actually the first shape is ready. We can add another layer. Also drag it down to draw on the right side. So let's first select the base color for it. This time it'll be number 9. I'm switching to textured liner. Let's lower the size to 30% again and draw another arc here. Let it go like this. Let me also make it a bit more straight here. Then we can increase the size. And also paint it like this. The entire shape. Now let's also apply a lock on it. And put some highlights, starting with color 14. Let's use the same texture as we used on the previous shape, and it was textured shader. We can start making strokes on top of it but keep it darker at the bottom. Let's also try to keep it parallel and follow all the curves. Here I'm not pressing too much on the pencil, so it doesn't get too light. Let's make a few more strokes here. And after that select color 13, put it right on top, for another highlight. We can lower the brush size a little bit, and continue painting with low pressure, until it gets a highlight, this way. Let's still try to keep it dark at this point. So like there is a light spot that comes from the crescent. Ok, I think it turned out quite nice. Let's now add one more layer. Also put it underneath. Let's go to select a base color for the next shape. It'll be number 2. Let's also draw it using textured liner and then add the texture. Here we can make it a bit more curvy, but let me first lower the brush size. I will set it to 30% again and draw an arc like this. First it will go upper and then down. I think it can go a little more up. Then I will increase the size and finish painting. Exactly same as we did with two previous shapes. Let me also try to use liquify. I want to move this peak 
more to the left. And make it more flat on the right side. This is where we will put the house later. This line can go more straight here. Alright. Now it looks better. Let's go to alpha log the layer. So we can shade it as well. Starting with color 15. Actually we will add lighter colors for the highlights and keep this one at the bottom only. Let's not forget to switch to textured shader and start making strokes. At first the brush size can be set to around 35%. And the strokes will go parallel to the edge. You just need to make it slightly textured. So let's apply low pressure on the pencil. And after we did that, we can put a lighter color number 16. Continue making strokes the same way. They will also go parallel. Set it on top like this. And put more pressure on the edge to make it more highlighted. I think we can put some more contrast and darken this part at the bottom. So we can try to use color number 9. Just making subtle strokes here. And blend them with the light colors. Like this. And after we did that, we can add the final highlight with color number 7. Lower the brush size a little bit and put it here on top. Let's highlight the peak a bit more. Because it is located higher, so it will be more highlighted. Let's also spread this color a bit to the right side. This way. And now after we did this part, we can draw the last one on the right. Let's just tap on this plus button. And then drag the layer down. As the base color, let's use color 17, which is darker. To draw it, I will select textured liner. Can be set to around 26 or 25 percent. And we can make one more arc. Let's also paint it all. I hope you can see the difference. Now I want to fix it using liquify. Just make it more curvy like this. So I will push it down. Now we can also alpha lock this layer. Open the color palette and pick color number 3. Using textured shader brush, let's make a few strokes on top of it. As always, I'm not pressing too much on the pencil. Now we can start pressing more here to make it lighter on top. And also try to make strokes in different directions. To reveal the shadow, we can actually tap and hold here to switch back to the previous color. 
and make a few more strokes. This time go into the side like this. For another highlight, let's pick color number 14. Put it more on top. And to the end apply color number 7 just as always. It is the color that is reflected from the crescent on the snow. In the end we will get this. I think we have enough shapes. So we can now start working on the background. And before we draw some more trees here and then add a cabin, we can put some gradient. So I just added a new layer. And then we need to drag it underneath. Then select color number 2, go to selection and switch to rectangle. Now we can outline a rectangular shape at the bottom. It will go outside the canvas like this and then up. Let's put it somewhere here. And then if we click color fill, it will be filled like this. Let's remove the selection and then pick color number 3. Activate it again and draw a smaller rectangle. This time it will go like this. It is also filled, so we can now go ahead and remove selection again. Now all we need to do is apply Gaussian Blur. It is here in Adjustments. Let's select it from the list and start sliding to the right. To remove all the sharp edges until we get this nice gradient. Here I've set Gaussian Blur to 41%. So we can now deselect it. And if you'd like to move your gradient, you just need to go to Transformation menu, switch to Freeform. We can also use Magnetics. And just drag it up or down. So this is how it works. I just wanted to make it lighter here, so I moved it up. And here on top the sky will look darker. Also we can put some stars. For that let's add another layer on top of this one. Also pick white color from the color disk. By double tapping here. And in the same brush set, there is a brush called Fine Sandy Texture. It'll work just great to draw stars. We need to lower the brush size to get smaller shapes. Let me try this. I think 30% will work here. And we can start making strokes. Just like this. Now let's go to Adjustments and apply Gaussian Blur on this layer. Just slide a little bit to the right, so they will look a little bit blurry. I think around 3% is fine here. If you'd like to make the stars bigger after that, you can use Uniform Transformation. I will remove Magnetics. And just scale it a little bit. We can also drag it up. Now let's go to the layer. We can even set it to add mode to get some shine, but then lower the opacity. On the light color they will shine brighter. So we can set it to around 70%. After that grab a razor, set it to soft brush, and remove some of the stars from the light part. I think it is too bright. Let's make a few strokes with low pressure. So here the stars will be almost invisible. Usually they are more seen on the dark sky. 
we need to keep that. Alright, I think now it looks much better. We can add some trees here on the side. But since they are located further, we don't have to make them very detailed. Let's just put another layer on top of this one and select color number 5. Let's also go to the brush set and pick dry brush. Set its size to around 22% and start making vertical strokes up and down. Also move the pencil to the right. This brush is unpredictable, so you will get different shapes. Here we can make them a bit smaller. So let me also lower the brush size. Make a few more strokes. Make them very small. And stop somewhere here. Let's fill these gaps on the left side. Also go a little upper. And I think now it is done. We can shade it. To do that let's alpha lock the layer. And select color number 15. Or it can be color number 2, they are similar. Now using the same brush. Let's make more strokes at the lower side. Also going up and down. And moving to the right. It can also have different height. And it'll work as a shadow. We can even paint horizontally. To darken the side more. And now after we did that, let's put a highlight on top with color number 7. Just do it the same way. Go into the right side. Working on the tips like this. Finishing it here, right on the edge. And now after we did that, let's match this texture. So let's select finger and use texture shader brush for it. Set the size to around 7 or 8 percent and make vertical strokes here as well inside the shapes. Due to the alpha lock that we have, the color won't go outside anyway. Let's continue doing this. And since the trees are located very far away, we can see that from the size of the trees compared to the big trees on the foreground, we won't see any branches here. They look more like icicles. We just need to finish it on this side. A couple more strokes. If you like, you can switch back to brush. Just make more strokes to make it more highlighted. But then smudge it again. Until you like the result. Let's make a couple more strokes to finish it. And now it is done. In the end you will get this. Before we start drawing the cabin and some other elements, let's put a crescent here in the middle. For that we can create another layer. On top of this one. And keep using color number 7. Let's switch to textured liner brush. 
set the size to run 21% and first draw a circle. Not very big. If you wait a second and tap on the canvas, we will get a perfect circle. And after that we can scale it. Now we can paint inside it with the same brush and it'll look like a full moon, but we want a crescent. So let's select a razor and pick the same brush for it. It is textured liner. Let's set the size to around 23% and try to draw another circle. Like this. Let's also wait a second, then make it perfect. We can also scale this one. And if we click here on the circle, we can edit it by dragging these dots. We can create different angles for the crescent. I like this one, so I will keep it. Switch back to eraser and finish erasing it. Actually, we can first paint close to the line, then go to selection, switch to freehand, and outline it without color fill. I think it is faster this way. Just need to tap here, then swipe three fingers down, and click cut. After that, we can also scale it. And move however we want. I will drag it a little bit upper and center it according to the sides. Now we can duplicate this layer, go to adjustments and blur it with Gaussian blur to add some glow to it. We can set it to around 16% I think. And if you set the layers mode to add in the settings, it'll look almost white. To reveal more yellow color, we just need to lower the opacity. It can be set to around 50%. Now we got the crescent. And to add some realism to it, we need to remove the stars behind the crescent. We have them on this layer. So let's just tap here. Select a razor. And here we can just use soft brush. Draw a circle like this. Alright. This is also done. In the next part of the video, we will draw a cute winter cabin. First of all, we need to create a new layer for it. Let's put it above all groups and layers. Then go to the color palette to pick color number 18. It will be our base color. And we can draw this cabin using textured liner. Let's just lower the brush size, because it will be rather small. The size can be set around 15%. Let's draw a rectangle. And we can also add some perspective to it. By making this side a little bit bigger. Let's now connect these lines. And also draw another rectangle that will go to the right. Let's also add an angle to it. Then draw a vertical line. Also connect these two. And we can actually paint these shapes. I made the size bigger. To make it faster. Just like this. We can make it a little bit less textured. Just by making more strokes. Like this. Now let's create a shape for the roof. It's frontal part. Let's make the size smaller again. It was 15%. So 
so we can put another line. Then connect it to this corner. We can actually continue this one. And also draw on the right. Match it with this point. Let's also paint this part. This way. And on top of it, we can put some snow. Let's do it on another layer. We need to put it above this one. And then select color number 11. We can first draw on the left side. Make it slightly curvy like this. Then it will go above this corner. And to the right with an angle. Then it will go down like this. And then we also need to paint it. It will be the base. Let's fill it with a color like this. And after that we will shade it. Alright. Now we got the base color. Let me just fix this corner. I will set a razor to the same brush. And make it pointy. Just like this. Alright, now let's go ahead and alpha lock the layer to apply more colors to it. For the shading we can apply color number 8 and use grainy pencil for that. Just need to lower the brush size for this small shape. Let's try around 33% and put it here at the bottom. Go upper and also put it in this corner. It will be in shadow. We can just go a little upper this way. And now all we need to do is add the highlight with color number 7. I will lower the brush size just a little bit to highlight it here on the left side first and then also go to the right. Make it very light. It is located right under the crescent. So it will look like this. And also to add some volume we can put a highlight right on this edge. Where it is matching with the wall. Alright, now let's work on the house in the middle. For that we need to go to the previous layer. I think we don't even have to alpha lock it. Just select the lighter color number 19. Switch back to textured liner and start making horizontal strokes inside the frontal part. Keep the sides dark. It will be the highlighted part. Let's also do it on this side. Just make a few strokes like this. And we can also try to highlight the corner by making a vertical line here. I 
I think we can also do this. We are on the correct layer. Just need to select eraser. And make this curves on the side. So it doesn't go straight. Like this. We can also do it here on the side. And after that we can draw windows. Let's create a new layer above this one. And select dark color 21. Then lower the brush size. I've set it to 6%. And we can draw a small rectangular shape here. For the small window. It can go with an angle. Like this. Now let's draw a bigger one here. Just create a frame. So let's draw a vertical line in the middle. And then also a horizontal one. Now do the same here, but it can be smaller. Something like this. Let's also add a vertical line and a horizontal one. Alright, now we got the frames. Let's add light inside the windows. We will need a new layer for it, but let's create it under this one. After that select color number 20 and just paint inside the frame. Like this. Also in this one. And now after we did that, let's finish it by adding wooden texture. We can do it on this layer, with base colors. Let's also select color number 22. We can put highlights here on top of this window, also under it. Then lower the brush size even more. And continue making horizontal strokes here and there. Let's continue moving down. Also put a bigger highlight under the window. And around the frame. Just a few more lines. And we can also do it here on the right. Okay, now it is done. Since it is evening or even night, we can add glow. So let's just duplicate layer number 27 with this yellow color. Put it above the frames. Then go to adjustments and select bloom. Now let's start sliding to the right until we get the glow. Let's also adjust the size here in the settings and the amount of burn. We can finally adjust bloom amount and I think now it is fine. So I've set bloom to 46%, size to 23% and burn to 34%. Then we can just lower the opacity. So we can see the frame. Alright, this is the difference. I like it so far, but we also need to add chimney on top of the roof. 
so we can definitely merge these layers and even merge it with the roof then create a new layer and first select color number 19 let's draw a vertical line first go upper it doesn't have to be perfect all right now let's select the darker color number 18 and draw the other side of the chimney like this we can also add some smaller shape here just as a detail then also draw on top of it and add some snow so we can select color number 7 and then just make a stroke inside it all right now the cabin is ready maybe i will just make this chimney a little bit bigger and move it a little okay now it matches with the size of the cabin I think I will sharpen it a little and then go ahead and merge these two layers let's now drag it a little up to put it on this hill I will just match it with the side so it can go a little to the right And after that I will grab a razor, it is already set to textured liner, so we can erase the curve at the lower side, like it is drowning in snow. Let's make a stroke here too, and now it is perfect. We only need to add the shadow. For that let's add a layer under the cabin and pick color 25. Let's also set the layers mode to hard light. And using textured liner, draw the shadow manually. Let me increase the brush size a little. And then we can draw like this. But the shape of the shadow will also depend on the location. If it is right under the crescent, it can just go as a triangle. But here it is a little bit on the side, so it may look like this. Now let's paint it. I will adjust the edge here. But since it got very dark, we can also reduce the opacity of this layer to around 58%. Let me just make it a little bit curvy here. I'm using a razor. And now I think it is fine. Let's add smoke that comes from the chimney. For that let's create a layer above the stars and select color number 11 first. Now in the brushes, we need to pick grainy pencil. And to draw the shape, we can use selection. Let's now tap here on the selection tool and use it in freehand, but we don't have to fill it. Let's start drawing a curve that comes from the chimney. First it will go to the left side like this, then up, we can make another curve, then go outside the canvas, until here, then to the left side again, with a few more curves, 
and then we need to connect it with the starting point. Like this. Now let's tip to activate the brush. Set it to maximum size and start painting inside the selection. Just paint it all. Let's go down. Continue doing this. Also, we can change the color into number 7 and make a few more strokes. Blend all these particles together. Now we can remove selection. And if you don't like the edges, you can use eraser to fix them. Let's just set it to textured liner. Set the size to around 25% and try to make them smooth. Because selection doesn't work perfectly. And hands may be shaking. It's totally fine. Also, if you are not quite satisfied with the shape, you can use Warp or Liquify to fix it. Let me try to apply Liquify tool. For example, I will make it more rounded here. Just pushing it a little bit down. On this part. But generally I like it. Maybe it can just go a little bit more to the left. So it covers most of the sky. I will push it a bit more. Also down. And now I think it looks perfect. Let's deselect it, then tap on the layer and try to change its blending mode. It can be set to overlay if you want to blend it with the sky or soft light. But if it looks too pale, we can just duplicate this layer. Then grab a razor, set it to grainy pencil and erase some parts. For example, here on top. It will also get some volume. Alright, now we got this. Just as an experiment, we can try to set this layer to some other blending mode and see how it will look. So let me scroll down here in the menu. And I think I like this one. It's divide. Very nice. Okay. Now to fill this empty area on the right side, we can duplicate the first cabin. And after that drag one of the layers down. Under all hills. Let's flip it horizontal, move it to the right side, we can also make it smaller and put it between the tree and the cabin. Now switch to freeform and transform it a little bit more. I will just push it down, so it looks different. We can also try to change the angle. So we can see it like this. Alright, let's also try to change its color by using hue saturation brightness. First let's make it brighter and then we can lower or increase saturation. I think I will set saturation to 57% 
Head brightness is at 60%. After that, we also need to add smoke for this cabin. So let's put a layer under it. Select color number 11 again. Granny pencil is here. And we can use selection. Just draw some other curves. Starting from the chimney. Let's make this shape a little bit different. And they may intersect. It'll go outside the canvas as well. Here we can put some more curves. And then just step to connect them. And after that apply the brush. Just as we did with the first smoke shape. Let's keep it grainy like this. Maybe just add color number 7 or 13. So it has two colors, not just one. Let's remove selection. And set this lace mode to soft light. Now we can also duplicate it. And then I will lower the opacity of one of the layers. So it can look a little bit different. Let's try to keep it at 50%. And this is what we will get. There is also a lot of space here that we can fill by drawing some more fur trees. Let's just find this layer. It is this one. So we can create a new one above. We can use some dark color, like number 19. And draw some simple shapes using textured line and brush. Set it to a small amount. Like 10%. Let's draw a few curvy triangles for the simple tree. The first one on top. We can paint it right away. Then draw a bigger shape. It will also have a few curves at the bottom. We also need to paint this one inside. And after that add a couple more. The next one can be a little bit bigger and have slightly different shape. Let's finish painting this one. Like this. And I think we can add one more. It'll be a little bit wider. It'll be the last one. Let's also do this. Apply the base color. I will see how it looks from distance. And adjust some curves. We can almost connect them. And I think this shape is fine. I will move it a little bit, put it somewhere here, closer to the cabin, maybe even stretch it in free form to make it higher, like this. After that, we can shade it just by alpha locking the layer. Let's first apply some light bluish color, for example number 15. And with it, let's use granny pencil brush. 
set it around 19% and start making strokes on every small shape. Let's continue going down. Now it looks this way. And to finish highlighting it, let's apply color number 7. Mostly on the right side. On this one. On top of it. Then the next one. And the last one here. Let's finish highlighting. Also at the bottom of it. And instead of drawing more trees, we can duplicate this one a couple times. This one will go to the left. Let's also scale it uniformly. I will drag it more to the side. Then duplicate the first three one more time. Go here. Move it again. And this time I will stretch it in free form. Make it higher. Let's also adjust its location. I think it can go here. Now we only need to add the shadow under the trees. Same as we did for the cabin. We have it here on this layer. So we can actually merge all three layers for the trees. And drag them upper. Put them above this layer with the shadow. Now let's go here. So we can draw on the same layer. And use the same color number 25. Let's select textured liner. Make the size at around 25% and start drawing the shadows. Also here, I can go with a small angle, just like this. And to adjust the edges, let's use eraser with grainy pencil. Just erase it here on the edges, so it will be vanishing. Like this. If you'd like to adjust the shadow separately, you just need to outline it using freehand selection. And then use transformation. I think I will change the angle a little bit by using distort. Just like this. Now it is better to add some bright spot to the illustration because it looks all blue. We can put a cute tiny bird here on top of the tree. For that let's create a layer on top of our layers and start drawing the bird. Let's now grab color number 6 for the body. Textured liner is selected. The size is at 10%. And since this color is light, we can draw somewhere on the blue color, just to see it. We can also keep it very simple and first draw a circle or an oval. Let's also paint inside it, so it'll get a little bit textured. And now we can draw another oval for the rest of the body. Just like this. We also need to paint it. Maybe I will go a little more up here. And after that. We need to select color number 19 
also create a new layer above this one and draw on top of the head first. Let me lower the brush size here to 10%. Let's match the edges. Then draw this way to the neck. And after that we can add a ring. It will go outside the body. can be slightly curvy. And then go inside it. Let's now also paint it this way. We can make it a bit wider just by adding more feathers. And after that, add a tail at the lower side. It can also have a few feathers like this. Let's also match it. Make some of them longer and bigger. And we can also put the second wing on this side. But we can see it only like this. Maybe this bird is a bit too fat. But it is even cuter. Now we need to select color number 23, go back to the previous layer, add another one on top of it, and then clip. Now let's make the size bigger to make it more textured. And just draw like this. On the head and on the chest. Now let's pick color number 21 to add some details. We can do it on this layer that is on top. So let's lower the brush size and draw an eye. Also a cute tiny beak. Let's add some details on the feathers. Just as lines. Also on the tail. Just a couple lines like this. I think we can add some shade in here. So let's pick color number 19. And to adjust it a little bit, we can go to the color disk. Let's make it a little bit brighter. So I will drag it up and to the right. Let's now pick grainy pencil, go back to this layer and create one more between these two. Set the size to run 22% and put a shade in here, close to the wing. Make strokes like this. Now all we need to do is add cute tiny legs. So let's open the color palette and pick color 24. Switch back to textured liner and just draw two lines. Here we can set the size to 18%. Let's just go to this layer again because it is not clipped and then draw. I think the size can be at around 12%. Now we can definitely merge all this lace for the bird and put it on top of this tree. Let's drag it to the side and also scale it. I will make it smaller. It is too big compared to the tree. I think it can be even smaller. And now it is perfectly fine. I will just rotate it a little bit. Now after we did that, our illustration is complete. 
and the last step is totally optional. It already looks like winter, but there is not enough snow. Actually, we have a crescent, which means there are no clouds, and snow comes from the clouds. But if we assume it is a fantasy illustration, we can just add some snowy texture all around the canvas. For that we can add one more layer above this one. Go to the color disk and pick white color. Then select fine sandy texture. But the size needs to be bigger than the stars. So let's try around 50% and make a few strokes. I think it looks a little bit too crowded like this. So we can try to set it to overlay mode. And also lower the opacity. So it is not so bright. It can be set around 54%. So you can keep it snowy or without snow. It's up to you. At this point, our cute winter scenery illustration is complete. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I already can't wait to see your works. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tutorial videos. Thank you for watching and see you soon!